welcome to Sculpture Studios. I think when people hear the word sculpture, a lot of first thoughts must be something large and grand sitting outside somewhere, and if that's the case, then this video certainly won't disappoint. Now, this could be something like a Greek statue, or something far more abstract and conceptual, and on this occasion, we're actually bringing a piece of art off of the page from the conceptual mind of artist Sheikha al Mazrul from Dubai. This idea focuses largely on a body of her work which seems to incorporate breaking the assumption of a material property, squeezing metal, squashing stone, and this idea of a material buckling where it really doesn't look like it should to create something visually stimulating, and frankly, something you can't help but want to touch to find out exactly what it's really made of. From a rough sketch, we're being entrusted by Shaker, the artist, and our client William Lawry to extrapolate a 2D design and add an extra dimension to it. By dimension, I'm talking some considerably large dimensions, as this is going to stand at a whopping total of 4 metres tall. Now, it's always a simple idea, here's a drawing, make it 3D and make it big, but I think you and I both know that we need to put a lot more thought into it. We're looking into internal metalwork structures, the idea of mould making or a blanket coat route, and the best way to create this. So let's take you on through to the studio, shall we? Today you're joining us with a truck ton of polystyrene entering the studio. Um, we have a project here with our client William for Regent's Park, and if you take a look at the image here, it's effectively going to be a four metre tall sculpture of all these individual pillows or cushions all stacked up. It's going to be four metres tall, about 2.4 metres wide. Um, at the moment we're sending off to Fine Limit Welding, who are tackling all the metal work for us. They're creating this metal truss with a 2.6 metre wide frame, um, and this is going to run up through the centre of the entire sculpture. Here you can see roughly the polystyrene just begin to be blocked out. We're leaving a large space inside for the 800 square tower to go up through the centre. When we have this delivered, this will allow us to block around it, clad everything together. Aiden's going to start working on the carving. This is going to be carved from polystyrene, blanket coated in glass fibre and worked up to a really good finish. Um, it's a very tight deadline, as with everything in 2022 at the moment, but um, we've got everything planned out over the course of the next two months so that we get the polystyrene pattern approved before we go on with any hard coats and uh, we've got to make it in time for the deadline. Regent's Park, let's get going. So, remember when I said that there's more thought that needs to go into this than first meets the eye? Well, how about throwing in the added brief that not only does this need to come apart for general transportation, but the sculpture also needs to be created so that both pieces can fit into a 20-foot shipping container. And this may give you a little indication of the eventual journey of this sculpture going abroad at some point. This means the metalwork inside also needs to be constructed in more than one part, provide the crane lifting points for each piece, but for now, let's just focus on the enjoyable, creative part of the project. The polystyrene is being adhered together using a polyurethane expanding foam, and we're going ahead by mapping out the sketch as a blown up image on the side. Bearing in mind that this one profile shot is all we have, and the rest of the carve is being based on conversations that we've had with Shaker and William, and the nature of Shaker's previous work. The usual work with nail and wire brushes commences. Not a lot I can say really, apart from Aiden's just good at this. Some things you can't explain, and he's had a damn lot of practice. Not bad for a 23 year old, you know what I mean? So here we are with the main blocking out of the, probably the bottom two thirds of the sculpture. This depth here is the max width that can get into a container, so this can be transported as well for us. Finished in Regent's Park, it can go abroad, be transported easily by a freight or however it's going to be moved. And here we're allowed a lot more depth, because um, if this goes in a 20 foot container, we can afford to have each of these pieces about 10 foot each. 
but, uh, but this is the, uh, the rudimentary form so far. Again, cut with a hot wire. Then once Aiden's happy with the general form, making sure all these corners are varied enough so that each cushion or pillow looks like it's going in a ever so slightly randomly stacked direction. Then Aiden will go to work with wire brushes and nail brushes to start carving the form properly. But remember, Shaker's art is, uh, is very much stylized to look like uh, pillows are almost made out of a, a thick card. The dents and the crinkles need to be in keeping with her art style. For anyone watching at home wanting to give something like this a try, the best advice we can give is literally just go for it. I mean, I'm not necessarily talking about a 4 meter tall piece of sculpture straight off the bat, but start small and gradually work your way up with practice. The tools we use are relatively rudimentary, in fact the hot wire, believe it or not, is probably the most sophisticated tool that we use for foam carving. The rest is all done with hand tools. You can buy wire brushes online, we'd literally make our own nail brushes here in the studio, hammering a few nails through a wooden block and creating a handle, and the rest is just sandpapers, knives, saws, and stonemason rifflers for neater work. If you're able to source large styrofoam blocks from packaging or insulation companies like we do, then that's always a good start, but whether it's something in polystyrene or something like clay, there's no better advice than to simply practice. We get a lot of messages from people who have said they've always wanted to try this or it's a passion that they've never really got round to, so perhaps it's time, whatever stage you are in life, to give this a go. Perhaps have a look through some more of our videos on our channel for a little inspiration and you may just pick up a few hints and tips along the way. And trust me, it's really not a bad channel to be a subscriber to, if I say so myself. <laughs>
with sped up clips and everything edited together into one project video, it's sometimes hard to appreciate the amount of work that goes into something like this. Obviously we try and include everything we can, but we're talking a good few weeks to a few months worth of work for all of the processes that you see. Everything takes time and a lot of manpower, which, at this point, is pretty much just one man. He wants all of the carving for himself. He loves it. He can't get enough of it. Here we are, with the uh, captain of the ship once again. Yeah, we see it, we see it. Constant uh, amendments here, just tweaking what we're thinking looks right. Adding a couple of kinks here, for lack of a better word. But we're now just going to make this one giant crease to judge and by shape of concept images. A lot of these pillars look like a big fingers just pressed to me gently on either side. So things like these larger buckles here somehow seem to favour it better. It's nice to have a couple of smaller ones, a couple of dents, but this kind of thing's going to gradually be worked out more. But this is just a little bit of placement, nice little buckle going on there. But it's a tricky thing. If we uh, were creating something from actual large pieces of folded paper, the buckles would happen naturally. Kind of like the uh, what we did with the Panasonic crinkle cup. To create the right kind of buckle in it, we actually bent the physical shape. But, uh, but with this, this is all literally being carved. No exact set plan. But here you can see just like a larger buckle is being created, but we'll see how it turns out later. The Metalwork Truss has now been created, along with the square footprint frame to go on the ground. This now also needs to break apart for transportation and to fit inside the freight container, so now needs to be split into two pieces. This breakdown into two sections means that we need a way of connecting it back together on site, so more fabrication to consider. We do everything that we can to work as effectively and efficiently as possible, fortunately having a few tricks at our disposal. Not every studio can say the same, and some things can't be taught unfortunately. The eyelets at the top of each frame will allow a crane on site to lift each half of the sculpture by the metalwork to stack the second piece on top and bolt everything together. The 800mm square box frame means that this truss is large enough for someone to climb down through the centre in order to gain access to the fixing points. Everything has had a treatment of a red oxide paint to help prevent against oxidisation when out in the public. So we have sent another walk around video to both William, our client, and Shaker, the artist, and uh, we've got the approval and go ahead to start hard coating this. They've approved the master carving, and they said yes. Please proceed. What's uh, what's happening here, Tom? So I am uh, foiling this lovely uh, carving by Aiden. Uh, this is to basically protect the body from the resin and fiberglass. Um, one thing that uh, nobody knows is where we get this tin foil, so no one knows. <laughs> Tom's only been here for two projects, he already knows, <laughs> he already knows what's classified. <laughs> so we're going to go over the entire sculpture with our secretly sourced sticky back tin foil. Um, it's going to take a bit of time, but this is to ensure that the resin doesn't melt straight through the polystyrene. Um, we're going to go over with a hard coat, blanket coat layer of um, glass fibre. Nice and durable, nice and strong. It's going to be a, a long-term outside piece of sculpture, so we're going to go over with multiple layers. People may climb in on it, may kick it, all that sort of thing. So uh, it needs to be nice and hardy to go outside. Ah, the secretly sourced sticky back tinfoil, always a popular request. We need to cover every square inch so there are no breaches. Once again, this takes a bit of time. And speaking of time, I feel like another time lapse, don't you? You can use multiple layers of a PVA glue, but this requires a messy, sticky process and requires a lot of drying time. This way, the foil goes straight onto the job and it's ready to go. 
Towards the bottom of each truss section, we're adding these extended platforms. This is so when the crane lifts the metalwork via the eyelets, it lifts the polystyrene and fiberglass properly from underneath the sculpture, rather than simply pulling the metalwork out up through the job. The metalwork is going to be bonded inside the polystyrene, but these platforms just help alleviate any unnecessary stress inside, with the sculpture relying more on gravity, sitting securely on a fixed base. I mean, we avoided the PVA glue, but there comes a time where you simply can't avoid stickiness in the workshop any longer. Well here we are, on the hottest day of the year so far. 37 degrees apparently, which is hot for us here in the UK. Got all the fans blowing, and today's the, uh, well apart from when Aiden's doing the carving, arguably the hottest, stickiest type of work in the studio. We're glass fibre in the entire structure. Here you can see the trapdoor section for this very top pillow that will allow access to the, the crane or the winch or whatever they've got moving it, allow access to the metalwork. And uh, it's now coming up on four o'clock, so we've got a couple of hours left. We've completed this larger section. This is the, the, the lower section of the sculpture. And we're now gonna be going over this top section here, trying to use gravity on our side, hit everything on the top sections, and then we can flip the whole thing over and work on all the undersides um, with gravity on our side once again. Um, we're gonna really strengthen all the edges as these are all the parts that people might touch or put their foot on or, well, well, you know, you name it, out in the public domain. Um, and then we're going over with flow coats of resin. We could start working up the surface, but uh, a very hot and sticky few days. You really feel the resin burning into you, but, you know, that's perks of the job, I suppose. The public may lean against or put weight on the sculpture, so we're bumping up with extra layers of glass fibre on all of the extremities where people are more likely to touch if they can get close enough. We've had sculptures out in the public domain now for many years, with theme park work actually being the real long-term installations. But in this case, we need to make sure it's safe and secure for the close-up public. Before completely sealing the sculpture, we want to make sure the metalwork is bonded securely in place so we can laminate the entire structure inside the job. To make sure this sits correctly, we're taking out a little extra material for a more comfortable fit. That's a very polite way of saying it was very snug. And packing this out once again with our polyurethane expanding foam and leaving it to set. We're going over now with resin mixes of flow coats and car body fillers. Though the bulk of the construction, the carving, the metalwork, the foiling and the glass fibre has all been done, this is where the real laborious process begins. We've originally quoted for a blanket coat and a flow coat finish, but we're going to be working this up a little better than that if we can. We're going to be working on this for the next few weeks, sanding, filling, re-sanding and working up again and again, until we end up with a really good result. Annoyingly, with all of the sanding going on, it means we can barely have any music or any audiobooks playing in the studio where it's so noisy, so this is literally just grinding away. Not enjoyable, and very dusty, but Shaker and YouTube, you're welcome.
With the project moving into the last few weeks of production, we've invited our client William and his senior management team, shall we say, down to the studio. It's good to be able to meet in person, both for ourselves as well as the client, this way they can see the work directly, and more importantly, they can get a proper feel for our team and the space, so that we're not just a foreign entity somewhere else in the country. William has been fantastic to work with from the word go, and it's great that he could spend the afternoon travelling down to our studio to take a look round and sign off on the work so far. to the home stretch now, and I mean we're really getting picky. What started off as a blanket coat is now nearing a smooth satin finish, and that's exactly the finish of paint that we're going to use. We're going over with primers and, seeing the most minute of surface scratches, we're constantly working with finer and finer grades of sandpaper, until we go, yeah that's the one. The paints we're using are 2K car body paints, which are generally strong and durable for outdoor use. We start with a grey primer as a base layer, for the coloured paints on top to bond properly to. We're in communication with Shaker, regarding the final colour of the sculpture. We're doing some initial tests with some deeper reds, and creating a sample for her, but eventually the decision was made to go with a red that best matched her previous work. We're working on some trolleys that each half of the sculpture can be moved around on. Not only is this beneficial here in the studio, as Aidan's going to demonstrate, but also to travel around with the sculpture to move them on site. This is to save the constant need for a crane or a ridiculous number of team members to help carry these around. Hi everyone, we're looking at Sculpture Studio channel. Thank you very much indeed, first of all. Um, here I am in the studio on Friday night on my own. Um, everyone's worked extremely, extremely hard on this and I can't thank them enough. We'll probably go out for an evening out as a little treat as well. We've got the um, two stacks of pillow which are two metres tall, eventually four metres tall. They weigh a fair bit on their own. We haven't quite weighed them yet but we will so we have a total weight just so for our own records. But I've made some trolleys down here so we can pull them around the workshop so we can art artwork them and spray them. Um, and I'll give you a little demonstration on how the whole thing just spins around. Although they're quite heavy and they're sturdy, I can move them. I've got a handle on them, so I can pull them around. I can give them a, a complete 360. And I could do it all on my own in the studio. And I'll come in tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, and give it a test colour with the 2030 red, which is a much punchier red, because we were going to go for a deeper red or a, a maroon colour, but now we've decided on a semi-sheen bright red, traffic red, I think it's called. Um, but yeah, looking good so far. Um, I'm happy with the, with the whole job, and I hopefully that shaker will be very pleased as well. But tomorrow is going to be the real test when I spray the colour. We'll see how we get on from there.
We've hired a curtain cider for the initial transport of the sculpture. This way, we can be sure to load it safely from the side of the vehicle, lifting it by the metalwork so that nobody ever needs to really touch the fiberglass too much. No need to get it through any tight doors, no sliding it all the way from the rear of the truck to the bulkhead, and more importantly, no damage. We can only hope that the same care is taken once we've handed this over. This is now on its way to Regent's Park in London for the free sculpture installation of October 2022. Who knows where this will be going for the rest of its life, but for now, maybe you've managed to catch a glimpse of this if you've been in London this October. Yeah. What you got to tell us? For the moment. <laughs> we're going to get it there safely. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get it there safely. That's what we're going to do. Aren't we? Best we can. All right, you got that? <laughs> Hi there, I'm in Regent's Park at the moment, it's on a Sunday, just come in to, to check on the install of the sculpture, uh, it looks like MTEP's done a good job in placing it down to the floor and fixing it, uh, beautiful surroundings, lovely greenery and plants in uh, Regent's Park at the moment, and it's alongside, which I didn't know, some other sculptures in the park as well, it looks really fantastic, the red blends against the green and it's a uh, nice contrast, it's, it's fantastic. Um, the fence are off at the moment until they're happy with it, all secure, and then release it to the public. I believe it's going to be here until, I think, November, and then it's going to be shipped to um, uh, another country, I believe. On the whole, it looks nice, and I'm proud of it. Very good. Thank you very much indeed, William, for coming to Sculpture Studios to do the work, and indeed, Shaker, for entrusting us with her concept in the beginning. So that's a really appreciated. I hope all uh, exhibitions go well around the world, and thank you very much indeed. Appropriately titled Red Stack, this piece of sculpture represents the concepts of this Dubaian artist and was brought to you by the might and maturity of the Sculpture Studios team. A special thank you must go to William once again from Laurie Shabibi for approaching us with this project, and we really look forward to any work in the future. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for our latest videos. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram via the links below and for all of our true diehard fans out there, you can now become a patron of our studio. All of our supporter contributions go towards the creation of these videos, so if you enjoy our content, you know what to do. Becoming one of our credited patrons means you'll be featured at the end of our upcoming YouTube projects like these guys here, so visit the Patreon link with this video to show your support. However big or small, I mean it doesn't need to be quite 4 metres, but give it a go, it's greatly appreciated from all of us here at Sculpture Studios. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>